In biomedical research, the study design having the highest strength that is experimental study or otherwise called a clinical trial. And this experimental study design is a planned experiment in which the efficacy of a new drug or a new uh, prophylactic measure or a new program or anything new it can be either it can be a prophylactic uh, regime or it can be a diagnostic tool or it can be a treatment or it can be a program anything is compared with a test group to that of a control group as this is an analytical study design there is always a comparison group so the new regime is compared in the uh, test group to that of a control group and they are followed up for a period of time to find out the outcome to find out whether it is better than the uh, existing uh, method okay so uh, here we are translating the knowledge or a research result into a better way into community otherwise uh, in the introduction class I told you a bench from the bench to the bedside okay so the experimental study design actually we are comparing the efficacy to find out whether in the new method whether it can be a prophylactic method or like a vaccine or it can be a diagnostic tool or it can be a treatment and that is compared to that of an either there will be a gold standard or it is compared to a placebo like that to find out whether it is effective more effective than the existing method okay so that is the basic thing we are doing in a clinical trial so there will be a uh, study group there will be a control group or a comparison group and both these are compared or followed up using the same uh, uh, method same regime for follow and looking for the outcome and these outcomes are compared to find out whether the study um, subjects the effect in study group is better than that in the control group. Where we get this study and control group? That is from uh, the population. So there is a whole lot of population. Either uh, suffering from the disease or the population at risk. If it is a therapeutic clinical trial, we get population having the disease. And if it is a prophylactic clinical trial, prophylactic clinical trial uh, we take the population at risk so in the class on introduction I told you that we cannot do this study on the entire population there will be thousands or lakhs or millions of population so we cannot take the whole because of feasibility issues because of the expenditure because of the time we cannot take it so we take a sample of the population to be studied okay so this is entire population So from the population, depending on certain inclusion criteria, certain exclusion criteria and also by calculating the sample size, we take a sample of population. Okay. And these samples are allotted to either to the study group or to the control group. So how can we, what decides whether to go to study group or to the control group? That is by doing a randomization. So again, this experimental study designs are of two types. It can be either a non-randomized control trial or it can be a randomized control trial. Obviously, the randomized control trial is a better one because in non-randomized, who divides them into study and control group? There is chance of bias coming there. So randomization, we do a randomization here. They are given either to the study group or to the control group. Okay, 
So if this sample or the population having the same chance of going either into the study group or into the control group. They have got an equal chance. And this randomization can be done by various methods. There are simple randomization method, there are block randomization method, or there is computerized randomization table is there. By any method we can do this randomization. So that there is a either uh, equal chance of this sample going into study or to the control group. And by that, three term, which I already uh, explained in previous classes, one is confounding. I explained with an example in previous class. Uh, then co-intervention. And bias. What are the terms? Confounding is a confounder which conceals. It's a nuisance which conceals the effect. It's a confounder which was already explained. Co-intervention is that. Think that X is getting a, a new drug and Y is getting a standard drug or a gold standard. Standard uh, X getting a new treatment and Y is getting a standard treatment. We knew that the he is included in the study group. There is chance that he will along with the new treatment he will go for the standard treatment. He will take the standard treatment also. So all that is called the co-intervention and also the bias. All these are minimized by doing this randomization. Okay, so randomization uh, gives a chance of the sample going equally into the study group and the control group so that the both groups are equal in almost all characters and also the confounding, co-intervention and bias are minimized by doing a randomization and there are different techniques or, of doing a randomization it can either be a simple randomization method or can, there is block randomization and also there is computer generated randomization tables are there by doing either way you can do a randomization. So another term used in uh, RCT, clinical trial is blinding. What is that? Think that, example, the person X getting the new treatment for a particular disease. He knows that he is getting the new treatment. So the, uh, the uh, person X may be worried or may be anxious about the efficacy of the new treatment. So there is a chance that he exaggerate even the minimal symptoms while the person Y having the standard treatment for the same disease may not uh, exaggerate the symptom or will be um, it will not point out the minor symptoms of the disease. And again, the investigator who is looking out the uh, outcome may be more uh, curious to tell that the new treatment is effective. So there is also chance of changes in the analysis part, making variations or interventions in the analysis part. So in order to um, remove or eliminate that uh, part, it is in the term blinding is introduced. That is, it can be a single blinded study. Single blinded where the participant does not know whether he is going either into the study group or into the comparison group. So he don't know. Yeah, maybe uh, he don't know whether he is getting the new treatment or the standard or the gold standard. So that is single blinded. And that is double blinded. In double blinded, the participant as well as the investigator is not knowing whether there is a person is allotted in study group or in the control group. In uh, single blinded, only the participant. Double blinded, participant as well as the investigator. And there is also triple blinded study. What is that? Even the person analyzing the study is not aware whether he is an, uh, uh, analyzing the study group or the comparison group. All the three are blinded, the participant, the investigator as well as the analyzing uh, um, agent. Okay, so participant, investigator and an analysis part. Uh, all the three are blinded is triple blinded. 
and if it is not blinded, it is an open-ended, open, open study. Okay, so that is blinding, and uh, uh, even this blinding will reduce the chance of co-intervention. And again, these clinical trials can be uh, a therapeutic clinical trial. where we are comparing the efficacy of a new drug to that of the standard treatment or it can be a preventive or prophylactic clinical trial. Okay, in therapeutic clinical trial, what is the population? The population will be person having the disease. Okay, therapeutic. Already there will be persons suffering from the disease and from that sampling is done. Again randomized into study group and control group. In the study group, if it is a therapeutic, it will be the new treatment and the control group will be getting a standard treatment and both are followed up to find out either a cure or the no cure or a disease progressing. Okay. And here also the standard treatment followed up and to find out a cure or progression. Okay, so that is a therapeutic clinical trial. And what will you do in a preventive clinical trial? In a preventive clinical trial, a preventive method is compared with that of a placebo. So, what will be the population? It is not the population having the disease, but the population will be either susceptible or at risk. Okay. So, population at risk or susceptible, from that sampling is done, randomized into study and control group and in preventive, the study group will get the vaccine and the control group will get the placebo. Okay, and both are followed up to find out development of disease. Okay. disease or no disease. Here also disease or no disease. So that is a preventive clinical trial. Okay. In clinical trial there are actually four phases. Of. These are the phases of a clinical trial. There are four phases. So in case of I will tell with an example of a vaccine. In a preventive clinical trial the scientists found out that a particular vaccine is effective in laboratory and also in animals for prevention of COVID-19 and they think that this vaccine is a very promising candidate in humans also. So after that it will be discussed at the uh, national and the local uh, level whether this, is, this has to be given in the particular population. And the phase 1 trial is in healthy volunteers, up to 50 healthy volunteers to find out the safety and acceptability. So the phase 1 trial is done and after that phase 2 trial is for uh, long term safety and uh, dosing and scheduling also and it is done in a low risk. In case of preventive it is at the low risk population up to 100 to 500 and the phase 3 is to find out the uh, effectiveness and that is in high risk group and uh, thousand or more in person and up to this okay and the phase 4 is after rolling or post marketing surveillance to find out the long term complications if any and it is community based okay once the vaccine uh, come to the community or uh, after rolling out then only this post marketing surveillance or the phase 4 happens so Phase 1 is for healthy volunteers for safety and accessibility. Long term safety, dosing and scheduling is in phase 2. And then in high risk, in larger population comes the effectiveness is for phase 3. And phase 4 is after uh, marketing comes that. And that is uh, community based surveillance. Okay. So you can imagine or you can uh, from this uh, you can find out that this clinical trial involves high level of ethical issues okay and uh, for the uh, study group or the test group there will be a adverse reactions can happen 
so many ethical issues can happen. So here the, there is high importance of an informed consent. Okay, informed consent and also a close follow for the adverse reactions in the study group. So an adverse reaction committee should be there and they should be informed about the study and there will be close follow up of them and also even after the study the follow up is needed in them and all their ethical issues should be considered in detail. So the importance of informed, informed consent is very high and also the ethical institutional ethics committee clearance if you are doing at an institutional level that is also very much needed and uh, uh, also if you are doing in India there is a clinical trial registry of India CTRI okay clinical trial registry CTR India okay so you have to uh, register in this and only after getting the uh, provisional certificate, you can start the clinical trial in India. That is also very important. And that is the main disadvantage of the clinical trial also. It is very much expensive, uh, very complex and also the ethical issues are very much high in case of clinical trials. But otherwise, by doing a randomized controlled trial, you can reduce uh, uh, selection bias. By blinding, you can reduce the bias. The chance of co confounding, then co-intervention, all can be reduced by randomization and appropriate allocation. And also, an RCT maintains all the advantages of cohort study. Okay, so this is uh, uh, clinical trial in short. It is not as easy as I told. It's very uh, difficult to conduct a uh, experimental study. But even then, it maintains a very high level of evidence and strength. Thank you.